you might be in this position where you're like, well, every graphics card that's released this generation, like the RTX 4060 is $300 or AMD's lowest priced option is $250. But you might be wanting something that's a little bit cheaper. So what options do you have? And that would be, oh, maybe do you want to go over to the 6600, which isn't as fast as others cards, but yeah, it's going for like $190 right now. Is a used graphics card worth getting? And is it a worthy risk to take? Well, I got this fancy new camera angle. What we're gonna be looking at is the RX 6600, which is a brand new graphics card that you can buy for about $190 right now. And it does perform pretty well, especially for the price. Like Nvidia doesn't really offer good options in that low price range. The RTX 3050 is not a very good deal, but the third party competitor is actually coming into play Intel is offering a graphics card, which I just posted on my community page, for $170 right now, you can get a brand new ARC A750. It is built way above its weight class, but can it perform as consistently as it should for above its weight class? So you're probably wondering, what is the used graphics card? Many of you guys who have been following the channel probably know what this is, D700 XT. Now I've recommended this card many, many a times for being a budget champion on the used market. For $100, $30 or around $140. It looks like people are actually buying these cards and their price is going up. We're going to get to see if it performs better than these two other cards, or is this something that you should just pass up on? Let's jump in. Okay. So starting off with every older graphics cards, greatest fear, and that's Alan Wake 2, because this game uses mesh shaders. And that means that 5700 XT doesn't support that. Neither does Nvidia's 10 series graphics cards. It gets dramatically less performance compared to the other cards here. The 6600 is 39% faster, same with the A750. So that means that they're actually able to play the game, whereas the 5700 XT, even with upscaling, can't even play the game at 1080p low. But that's not the case with every single game. Let's hop into Fortnite where there's a completely different story. By the way, we did win this game. And here, the 5700 XT is able to show its true colors being faster than both of the other cards in Fortnite, showing like 150 FPS. This is absolutely killing it in this game. And this card is cheaper. You remember that. Yes, it is used, but it's still cheaper. And at 1440p, it is the same story because 1440p monitors are less than $200 at high refresh rates on sale. They're so cheap now. 5700 XT performing good at 1440p in Fortnite. And it's pretty much the same story in DirectX 12, but the 6600 does catch up a little bit. So if you're on a 6600, you do want to play Fortnite in DirectX 12, it performs better. But the 5700 XT doesn't really seem to care what API it's on specifically. And I know that Fortnite isn't the most graphically demanding game or games that you're going to be turning your graphics up in anyways. But the real reason I wanted to test it because it's in Unreal, Unreal Engine 5 and a lot of new games are still going to be using UE5 and it includes Nanite and Lumen. So if you turn on Lumen on the high settings in Fortnite, the 5700 XT is able to deliver you over a 60 FPS experience. And actually it's 1% lows are also above 60 FPS, which means you're gonna get a very smooth experience. Now, this isn't gonna tell the story for every UE5 game that might be more demanding than Fortnite, but it is pretty cool to see at 1080p that you can get a very smooth gaming experience with Lumen on. This game loves the 5700 XT, and I think it especially loves the fast memory that it has because the 6600 doesn't have that fast of VRAM, and the 5700 XT pulls ahead because of that. And you can see as we move up in resolution, the 5700 XT is still able to give a good gaming experience, especially when you turn on a little bit of upscaling on the high settings. That is pretty nice for a car that's only 130 bucks in one of the, ga the games that came out this year that was so freaking demanding that people were, were having a crisis over it, including me. But let's move on to the next one. A Plague Tale Requiem, the 5700 XT is outperforming the 180 or $190 RX 6600 again. And at 1080p, it's giving it a really nice experience, but that, you know, that faster performance actually allows it to give almost getting close to 60 FPS experience at 1440p, which is really important. Although you will see that the A750 from Intel does perform really well in this game. So that's something to take into account. But from game to game, the A750 has pretty variable performance. Kind of like, again, 
in Resident Evil 4. 5700 XT still performs really well uh, against the 6600, but the A750 again is performing similar in this game. When we move up to 1440p, we can see that faster memory with the 5700 XT does give it an, a, more of an advantage against the 6600 as we see the percentage difference increase between them. Really nice gaming experience and that extra performance is able to get us up to 60 FPS at 1440p. This is enough performance to get you playable levels at the next resolution tier compared to 1080p. That is super important, guys. And Remnant 2 at 1080p, it's a pretty close race. Honestly, the 6600 is still giving you close to 70 FPS, so it's really not bad here. But the 5700 XT is showing its overall raw performance compared to the other cards. And if we move up to 1440p, again, that performance in this like AAA title that's very demanding is able to get us close to 60 FPS. So that extra power is actually useful. Now in a game like Spider-Man Miles Morales, this game isn't super demanding and at 1440p high settings an 80 FPS experience on the 5700 XT, which might be a game changer. It definitely improves the feel of the game. Now in Starfield, again, that performance is able to get us up to 60 FPS at 1080p medium settings on native resolution, not using any upscaling or anything like that. And if we jump up to 1440p, again, that performance is getting us around 50 FPS, which isn't perfect, but if you do use a little bit of upscaling at 1440p, which I think looks mostly fine, this card, again, is cheaper at $130 compared to like $180 for the other cards and is getting that level of performance is actually useful. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. In Cyberpunk, the 5700 XT kind of falls apart compared to the other cards, where the 6600 actually is faster at 1080p, but at 1440p, and I'm guessing because of the faster VRAM on the 5700 XT, it is faster than the 6600, but it doesn't really matter because it's only like 30 FPS, like it's kind of irrelevant. So the A750 just does well in Cyberpunk. And if you are curious, if you turn on FSR quality at 1440p high settings, then you are able to kind of get a playable experience on the 5700 XT. I'd recommend turning down settings to like medium or low in this game if you really need to play at 1440p but that's just my recommendation. Now, in terms of competitive games like Overwatch 2, I know not all games are as easy to run as Overwatch 2, but at 1080p medium, we're getting over 400 average FPS on the 5700 XT. All these cards can do esports, but the 5700 XT does perform the best across the board here. At 1440p, pretty much the same story. Overall, we're still getting a comfortable uh, like a mid 200 fps average on the 5700 xt other two cards getting over 200 fps but yeah you'd be more happy on the, the 5700 xt that would max out a 240 hertz monitor if you're a competitive gamer and you can get all this for only 130 bucks so you can be playing esports titles competitive games at competitive fps frames or competitive frame rates <laughs> really not have to invest a whole lot of money and that's pretty nice to see from a used graphics card it is interesting though when it comes down to features and the 5700 XT. If AMD does roll out more games with FSR 3.0 frame generation, the 5700 XT does support it. Though, because it's not the fastest graphics card in the world in the grand scheme of things, you might not always have a fast enough or high enough FPS to be able to double it and the latency wouldn't be too bad. If you want to check out a more in-depth video about FSR 3 and latency and stuff like that, go ahead and check out my card that's in the top right. It can support it, but it might not always be able to do it that well. Now, in other terms of features, don't expect to get ray tracing on a 5700 XT. Although in a game like Cyberpunk here, neither the 6600 or the A750 can really support ray tracing at the end of the day. But if you go to a game like Fortnite, apparently the 6600 at 1080p high settings with hardware ray tracing enabled, the 6600 is able to pump out about 60 FPS average here. And the A750 is getting a lot less in this case. And I'm not exactly sure why that's happening, but in a Plague Tale Requiem, again, 5700 XT doesn't have ray tracing. At 1080p though, 6600 just isn't going to be ray tracing very well in this game. Now the A750 
if you used a little bit of upscaling at 1080p, I'm not sure, and like you don't really want to use upscaling at 1080p, the A750 would probably be able to get 60 FPS, but ray tracing shadows doesn't really look that much better, so I don't think it's really worth that anyways. And Resident Evil 4, it is kind of a shame that the 5700 XT doesn't have ray tracing because even the 6600 was able to get like 60 FPS. I know ray tracing doesn't even look that good in this game. It's just reflections as far as I know, and people weren't even happy with the appearance though I haven't played through this full game. I just had the demo that I'm testing here. You can see the, the architectural differences between AMD and Intel here because A750 does perform really well with the ray tracing. Okay, so those were pretty interesting. We did see here that the 57, oh, I'm in the wrong thing, but the 5700 XT did perform quite a bit better than the other cards in most cases. Now, not in every single test, was this card actually faster because the other cards seem to do a little bit better in certain designs of games with the newer architectures within them. So yeah, this card did stack up very well. Obviously I have the, the waifu edition, so you can't have my waifu edition 5700 XT and that makes it run even faster than the other cards. Obviously it's not gonna be all sunshine and rainbows buying a used graphics card. Me personally, I've always bought used graphics cards for my own personal stuff. There is always that risk buying a used graphics card that you could get this thing and it just runs like crap like for for example here yes like it's in mostly good condition but at the same time i think one of these fans does make a little bit of a weird sound when it ramps up really high you can get things like this with used graphics cards you can't really do all that much about except try to fix it afterwards or try to return it to the seller if you're going to use anything use something like ebay because at least ebay um, you can get a return policy and they usually have your back on most things for whatever purchase you make there. I've had to use it and it does work well, but we also need to talk about some of the other things. We saw in the benchmarks that the 5700 XT does run less power efficient than the newer cards. Obviously with newer architectures, you're be going to be getting more power efficient designs and stuff like that. But the 5700 XT is generally running around 200 watts, whereas the 6600, it's only pulling like 100 watts. And that means it runs really cool as well. That's something that you just can't get with the 5700 XT on its older architecture and stuff like that. But at the same time, it was more powerful. So it kind of makes up that gap. So that is one downside about the 5700 XT, but I wouldn't think it's really that bad. Like 200 watts on a graphics card isn't, terrible also something that you could take into account if you're going to be using your gpu for anything other than gaming i did run some tests on blender you can see that the 6600 you know even on the newer architecture isn't all that much faster than the 5700 xt so you're actually buying the 5700 xt for less money and you're getting about the same render times in terms of the blender benchmark okay but the thing is where the Intel art card really comes into play here. It, it per performs really well in like productivity tasks. If you really are doing productivity stuff, Intel is genuinely a very good option. The only problem is we saw in a lot of the games that Intel could be kind of inconsistent. If you were at all interested in doing productivity work, it would maybe be worth stretching your budget up to the A750 or maybe looking at an NVIDIA co competitor card within that price range, like the RTX. You can get the RTX 2070 on the used market for a decent price, but it really is starting to get close to those new graphics card prices. So it's kind of iffy if you'd want to be getting this card at all at that point. Some things to consider with the used graphics cards. Obviously, it's not as reliable to buy this card compared to this one because this one you get a warranty with. This one you can almost guarantee it's going to work out of the box. Sometimes they don't. <laughs> That's not 100% reliable. Whereas this one doesn't always work out of the box and you might have to do a little bit of tinkering as well as when you're browsing a site you need to know how to look through sellers and judge people's character and their history to see if you're actually getting a good deal or if you're gonna get ripped off that's something that does take a little bit of experience a little bit of wisdom so if i look at this rtx 2070 um let's just see if this person who's doing this is you know, verified or not. I'm not gonna tell you to buy this card. But $170, this is an RTX 2070 OC edition from Asus. Just looking at the pictures, it looks like it's in pretty good condition. Um, and they give you all the materials. I don't know if they give you a box. A box would be nice. And then if you go down here, 
you'd see the description of it. Now, I'm not sure if I would 100% trust this person because the description of the card doesn't give you anything useful. All they're doing is stating the actual model of the graphics card. Now, they do have 100% positive feedback, so that's something to take into account. This person might be completely fine, but you also want to take into account if they accept returns. eBay will usually still cover you if you do have to return something on the on the site, but this seller does not accept returns. That could be a little suspicious. So there's always that aspect. You need a little bit of wisdom in order to buy things on the used market. But I'm just saying through my years of buying used graphics cards that I've actually never had a problem. <laughs> like maybe famous last words. There isn't that many options on the new market. And if you're really on a budget, something like this for 130, 140 bucks could be a really nice option. Just be careful y'all let me know what you think about the used graphics card mark is that something that you'd be willing to take a risk on or what are you looking at would you rather just pay for a new graphics card and get the warranties get the peace of mind i know a lot of people do personally i haven't been somebody like that i've always kind of had the philosophy is like if it's working day one it's probably going to be working another year down the line so i don't think the warranty on the graphics card matters a whole lot though sometimes it does and i do wish you the best best of luck in this graphics card market because it's kind of rough and we're just looking for budget entry level cards and a lot of people can't find that so hopefully this helps you let me know your thoughts in the comments below see you in the next video Peace.